So surprisingly, in Scotland, there is at least one person who shoots Pentax, which is handy because I got the X-Pro P trigger to play with. We're in a car park right now. We just arrived in Glasgow. We're gonna do some shooting around the streets, but first we need to figure out exactly which lights work with the X-Pro P trigger. So we're gonna head up to the roof of the car park and do some high-speed sync tests, and then we'll head out somewhere. Right, we're up on the roof. I'm here with Paul and Lex, and we're gonna go through each of the strobes and try and figure out which ones work with the Pentrax trigger and which don't. We've got a TT600 speed light, the AD200, the AD360 Mark II, the AD400 Pro, which may or may not work, and the AD600 Pro, which is definitely supposed to work. Ideally, we'd like to be able to take out the 200 because the 600 is kind of heavy, but we'll see. We're gonna go through them all now and see what works. So we've just done a test with all the Godox lights that we brought with us and I'm going to stick a chart up on the screen but basically with the TT600 speed light, there goes the sun, with the TT600 speed light we get high speed sync, obviously no TTL because it doesn't do TTL. On the AD200 we got high speed sync, no TTL, on the AD360 Mark II we got no TTL, no high speed sync, but it would fire when we were below the sync speed. On the AD400 Pro and AD600 Pro, we got full TTL, full high speed sync, complete capability with the Pentax trigger. We were hoping that the 200 would work and give us some TTL, but uh, apparently not. So we're gonna be going out, wandering around Glasgow, using the AD400 Pro with the Pixar Pro 65 centimeter softbox and uh, see if we can find some random people on the street to harass. So we've just done our first pass through the city photographing a few people. Um, the results look like they've been pretty good but I'm going to let Lex talk to you in a minute about that. But we're in Glasgow Green Park right now and Paul's here and Lex is here. What have you thought so far about how well it's performed and how it's been to use? Well I've found so far about the new Godos trigger, it has been very consistent. Yeah very reliable compared to the setup that yeah. I've been using which was with the Cactus V6 II and the Godox X-T1 Canon version and with high speed sync I find them very hit and miss sometimes. And do you get TTL with that combination as well? Not with high speed sync, it works better in manual right? but it still doesn't feel very reliable. Right. But well, this has been working yeah. fine up this, until today. This, I feel confident using this in a paid environment, paid shoot. Well, if I was using the old setup, I'd probably just leave that and yeah. use something more reliable, like a TTL cable or dedicated triggers right. with, dedi with actual dedicated with like flashes. Like a Pentax flash, yeah. yeah. Um, and you've not had any misfires or any issues with it today at all, have you? No, not that I noticed. No? And you've not had a play with it yet, have you? No, not yet. We've brought the Godox AD400 Pro out with us today as well, um, and that's been performing absolutely brilliantly. It's got a lot of power. We've got the S-Fit adapter on it so we can use the Pixar Pro. I think it's a 65 centimeter pulse doing his glamorous <laughs> assistant thing. But we've got the, uh, the Pixar Pro 65 centimeter quick pop-up softbox thing with it. I, I will put the proper name in the description below. I can't remember what it's called. I just know it's 65 centimeters. It's Pixar Pro and it goes up like an umbrella and it's really quick and cool. So yeah, so I mean, it's been a nice light little setup. We did bring the 600 Pro with us as well because we weren't sure whether this was going to work with Pentax. Turns out it does. It's got no problem with TTL, no problem with high speed sync. So we've been using that today and we've got obviously the Pentax trigger, the Sony trigger and the Nikon trigger. So all three of us can use this throughout the day without really changing anything on the light, it's just having the right trigger on the right camera. Um, but I think now we're gonna head 
back into the city towards where we parked and try and harass a few more people on the way and see if they'll let us take their picture. We are done in town. We had another pass through and photographed a few more people. A lot of people coming out to celebrate the weekend and get drunk, so we thought we'll head back to the car because we've parked in this really cool looking car park and it's absolutely dead, there's nobody here. So we're gonna try and set up a shot in here if we can on the ramp up to the next level because there's lights in the ceiling and markings on the floor. And like I said, it's empty, so it looks really cool. Right, so we... Slight change of plan, we got kicked out of the car park. <laughs> so we're uh, so we're driving now to try and find somewhere else to go do a shoot and uh, play around with the AD600 Pro, AD400 Pro and AD200 all in one shot. So Lex thinks he knows of another one nearby. So we're going to head over to that and check it out and see if we can get a photo in there without being kicked out. All right, so I'm currently being lit by the modeling light of the AD400 Pro inside a four foot parabolic oxa. Uh, we drove around, we tried to find another car park that we could actually shoot in. Got nothing, so we've come to Chinatown. And uh, you can hear there's roads behind us, a lot of traffic. So you probably won't see much of this because it is getting really, really dark. But what we're gonna do is he's gonna have Lex stood in the street. We're gonna add an AD200 with the Fresnel head uh, behind one of those columns to simulate wherever they are, those lights to make it look like the rim light is coming from those lights and then we're gonna have this as the key on the road from the other side. So I'm really enjoying the, the Sony trigger for this. It's much better than the X-T1 anyway. And, um, yeah, I'm really liking the Pentax one as well. It's much better than the Cactus V6 and the Goldox stacked together, the combo. A lot more consistent, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Well, what do you think to the 400? It's nice, it's um, much better built than the old 600 I've got. Probably has similar power as well due to the better build placement and stuff, so, and smaller, so it's really nice. I wouldn't mind some myself, to be honest. Got faster recycle times and... Aye, better yeah, colour accuracy better colour. and... Uh, what, what's the benefits to it? Mm. So this is a nice colourful background to end off on. I'm back in front of the AD400 Pro modelling light. That's pretty much everything for today. Um, the, the, light's, the light's completely gone. I'm really loving this as a video light actually. So this is, yeah, so this is the AD400 Pro modelling light at full power inside a 4 foot octobox. And I'm at a 50th of a second at F4 at ISO 800. So this isn't actually that bad as a video light. I think indoors it'd probably overheat and the fan had come on and you might pick it up if you're shooting video, but outdoors, I can't hear it with my own ears right now. So chances are the camera isn't picking it up either. I mean, I can hear Paul and Lex chatting away in the background. Yeah, they're really loud. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for today. I don't know what we're gonna do next. Um, yeah, but more shoot some fun and a bit of behind the scenes there will be a full review of the x pro trigger for pentax going up on diyphotography.net there will also be a review for the ad400 pro going up on diyphotography.net and there'll be some more content coming up with these soft boxes so keep an eye out on there for those we'll be back on this channel with some more stuff soon thanks for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>